Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, split the array to make co-prime products. The problem states that you are given an array nums and you need to split the array into two halves. The split at index i is called valid if the product of first i plus one elements and the product of remaining elements are co-prime. So for example, let's say this is the array. Now, if you take the split at i equals to one, then the product of the left half is 2 into 3 which is 6 and product of the right half is 3. So 6 and 3 are not co-prime. Hence split at i equals to 1 is not a valid split. But let's say you take a split at i equals to 0. So at i equals to 0 the product of the left half is 2, product of the right half is 9, 2 and 9 are co-prime and hence the split at i equals to 0 is a valid split. So you need to return the smallest index i at which the array can be split validly or minus one if there is no valid split. So this, they just given the definition of co-prime. The co-prime definition is uh, GCD of val1 and val2 should be equals to one. So let's take an example. Let's say this is the array, right? So they have uh, given the table where they are saying that, okay, up till what is the prefix product at, at, at index zero? at index 1, at index 2 and so on and like what is the suffix product at, at that. So you can see at index 2 the product of the left half is 2 to 4, product of the right half is 2 to 5 and the GCD of both of them is 1. Hence this is the first index where the left half and the right half are co-prime. So this 2 is the answer. So if there is some, some, some index before 2 which also yields GCD1, then that index would have been the answer, right? So hope the problem statement is clear. Now, how to solve this? So notice that we just need to divide the array into two halves, right? So how many halves are possible? Like you can put uh, a barrier here. So this is the left half and this is the right half, right? Similarly, you can put the barrier here or here and so on, right? Now, let's say you put the barrier here, right? what exactly you need to answer. You need to say that, okay, what is the product of the left half? What is the product of the right half? And then you will check whether the GCD of both, both of them is equals to one or not, right? So first you need to get the product of the left half and you have to get the product of the right half. So you, you can like try something like prefix sum here, right? You can just say that, okay, instead of maintaining sum, I will maintain product. So that's where I will be able to get the product of the left half uh, in order one. And we can just uh, divide the product with the product of the all the array. And that will give us the product of the right half in order one, right? But will you be able to store the product of entire array? The answer is not. Why? Because if you look at the constraint, each of the array element can be up to 10 to the power 6 and there are 10 to the power 4 of them. So if you see the product, 10 to the power 6 would be multiplied 10 to the power 4 times, right? And uh, the value would be 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 4. So this would not, we would not be able to store it in a 64 bit integer because 64 bit integer like long long int in C++ is actually 64 bit and that's the largest integer that you can store. So we will not be able to store the product of entire array in a 64 bit integer and hence this solution would not work. Now we need to, we, okay, so we, what we understand here is we can't store the product. So we need to still make sure that we are able to separate co-primes uh, from each other. So let's say four. So four has two as a prime, right? So what we want is we want left half and right half to be co-prime. So let's say there is some other element which also has two as a factor. So here eight, right? So eight also has two as a factor. So to make like if 8 goes in the right half then you know that left half will contain 1 2 right half will contain 1 2 and hence these two can't be co-prime ever 
right so that's where if you know that the there is a factor which exists somewhere in the right then you have to take both of them in the same half right so in this case we we know the fact like factors of 4 factors of 4 the prime factors of 4 the prime factors of 4 are 2 only so we will just see okay which all elements have factor 2 so here 8 so we'll say okay up till 8 i know this i will be taking in the left half now as soon as you said that now we have 7 right so again the same same trick like 7 is a factor here right now you would want that any number which have factor 7 should also be part of this half itself because otherwise you know if uh, a number which have factor 7 goes in the right half it means this half and this half would have 7 as a common factor and hence this will not be co prime so that's where we will just try to find the number which have 7 as a factor and we will include all of them in this half so here in this case 21 has 7 as a factor so we will include 21 as well in the left half so now left half is this part right now we we taken care of 4 and 7 but here we have also taking 8 so now again the factors of 8 is 2 we already took care of 2 like there is no other 2 afterwards so that's fine now 21 so 21 has two factors 7 and 3 right so we already took care of 7 so no issues there like there is no other 7 on the right we are not we are sure about that now what about 3 again the same argument applied if we take like if 3 is a part of the left half then all the 3 should be part of the left half so that's where we will now extend this left half to some like to all the numbers which contain 3 as a factor so this is now the left half now finally 3 so 3 has a factor of 3 and we have included all the 3 so that's where this is the first index where we are saying that all the factors of all the numbers are present in the left half itself now any factors here is not present in the right half and hence left and right half are automatically co prime right so that's what the approach was so now how will you like code this like we will we can just do the same thing in the code what we will do we will just initialize our result with zero right because we want the smallest we want the smallest index right so we will we will always want that the if possible this would be the split like only four in the left half and rest other in the right half so that's where we'll start with the, the first index we'll say okay uh, up till zero is my left half right now as soon as you say that up till zero is my left half you have to iterate over all the factors uh, up till zero and include every index which have f as a factor so we'll just try to find out the last index which have f as a factor right now how will you find out is something which is different thing but you have to find out the last index which have f as a factor now once you find out that last index you can just uh, uh, update your result result should result should be the max of result comma last index right now after you done this what we have ensured we have ensured that for the ith element whatever is the factor we have included all the numbers which have the same factor in the left half that's why we like we have incremented our result to the last index right so once you have done this you will increment i so you have to do the same thing for all the elements up till the last index right so basically let's say you are saying that okay up till here is my last index so you have to make sure that for every number whatever is the factor should be present in the left half so that's where we will apply the same trick for every index up till result right so notice that this loop will end this loop will definitely end at i equals to n minus 1 right because up till like if if nothing is possible then what you will saying that okay 
I will include everything in the left half. So that is definitely one answer, right? Uh, so that's where we are saying that, okay, this loop will end. And in this loop, we are trying to find out the minimum result that includes all the numbers which have their factors in the left half itself, right? So what is the time complexity of this approach? Uh, we are trying to find out the factors of every number, right? So this you can easily do in log n time with uh, some pre-computation. So this uh, is something which we are already aware of. Now, only thing that is left is we need to somehow find the last index of nums where f is a factor. So if we are able to do this uh, in an efficient manner, then the entire complexity of the solution would be n log n like where uh, log n is coming from this factorization, right? So now let's try to solve the second part, which is the last index of nums where f is a factor, right? So notice that we just want the last index where f is the factor. So we can just iterate over this array, right? And figure out the factors of each element. And once we reach a factor, we will just we will just update our result. So let's say we are we are maintaining an array. So this index denotes what is the last index where two is a factor. Similarly, this array denotes this index denotes what is the last index where five is a factor, and so on, right? Now, let's say you iterate over the array, you got five. So what you will do, you will just simply come here and update five. That okay last index at which uh, 5 is a factor is 5 right so similar now you will say okay 3 so last index at which 3 is a factor is now 4 now you get 21 so 21 has two factors 3 and 7 right but 3 is something which you have already filled up right so you will not touch 3 you will just say okay the last index at which 7 is a factor is 3 right and so on and so forth. So you will keep on doing for all the elements. So after you have done this, you will get this array built. And this array would denote what exactly, what we want exactly, like the last index of nums where f is a factor. So the pseudocode would look something like this. So you can uh, go in reverse order as well. I have just uh, choose, chosen to iterate the array in the forward order. So what I have done, like simply find the factors. Now for each factor, uh, we are just updating the last index array. Last index array with the maximum of last index and the current index, right? Because current index also have f as a factor, right? So what is the time complexity of this entire loop? Uh, we are again taking the factorization that will take all log n time. And then we are iterating over all the factors, which will again be log n. Like you can't have more than log n number of factors. Now, why that's the case? Because Notice that we are only taking the prime factors, right? So if you think about it, a number can have at max log n number of, uh, like log n number of fa factors, because let's say the smallest prime factor is two. So if you are making a number, you know that if you multiply two with two log n number of times, you will yourself get n, right? So at max log n factors can be there for any given n. So notice this is what this is at max because two is the smallest factor. If you take three here, the value will automatically decrease, right? So that's where like we know that the number of factors will be log n. So this loop will again run log n number of time. And inside this loop, we are just doing a max, max operation, which is order one. So the entire part would be n log n. So with this, we will get the last index array, which is the only piece that was left in this uh, particular algorithm. So we already know the factorizations and the last index array is something we have already built out before this, before even executing this loop. So this is now order one operation and this entire thing would be order n log n. So the entire al algorithm would now run in order n log n, this, or, this n log n, and then there's another n log n for finding out the result, right? So hope the solution makes sense. 
if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below again as always i will strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try to code this entire solution yourself uh, we we already have the pseudo code entire pseudo code here uh, you can just take the reference and try to code the solution yourself before jumping into the solution because coding the solution again is the very important part even if you understand to make sure that you understand every pieces of the problem right so next we will looking at the code the code is uh, simple like what we are doing is we are just calculating the last factor index with this loop so what we we have just found out the factors and for each factor we are just updating the last last factor index so i haven't taken the max here because i know if a later index comes then that is the that is the maximum right so let's say if if this already has j and that that j would be something which is before the current j right so that's where like i have then taken the maximum i know th the current index would be the maximum so i just updated the last factor index now once i have this last factor index this loop is again the same thing that we have discussed we will iterate over all the factors and in increment our result index to the maximum index now after this loop the it would point to the first index up till which the left half and the right half would be co-prime so if it is n we will return minus 1 because it we it is given the problem that i can be up till n minus 2 so we don't want i to be n minus 1 up, uh, up till n minus 1 so if it is n we will just return minus 1 otherwise we will return my it minus 1 right so hope now the only part that i have not shown is prime factors this is uh, just simple sieve algorithm uh, we are building the sieve here if not already built otherwise we are just uh, trying to find all the factors for a given number x right so hope this entire solution is clear again any doubts please post them in the comment section below like the, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you're not ready and i will see you in the next one thank you